what do we do about this? Where do we go? Now, the, the title of this talk starts off Embracing Brains and Bias. And what I mean by that is understanding how our brains work and then working with our brains, but also not being surprised when we come across bias, because it's out there. I still remember when I was eight years old and my mom made some uh, curry chicken salad and I got violently sick. Now for 20 years, I couldn't eat curry. Today, curry is one of my favorite foods, I love it. I doubt the curry made me sick even then, but don't tell me that it wasn't real, right? Because if I even smelled curry, I, I would get that feeling. And I think some of us have those experiences. We have an experience that's a strong connection to a memory, and it really judges the way we look at things in the future, whether it's right or it's wrong. Sometimes we develop those even when it's not a strong experience. I was reminded of that because uh, we're selling our house now. We're moving from Ohio to Brooklyn, and a couple came and visited our house, and then they wanted to come see it again with their daughters. And so I told my wife, well, I assume their daughters are adults. My wife said, well, why do you assume that? And I said, yeah, why do I assume that? And I thought through it, and I realized, well, you know, when we bought the house, we bought it from a retired couple with adult children. So I just kind of assumed that we'd probably sell it to a retired couple with adult children. She said, that's pretty stupid. I said, yeah, it is, you know? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. But, and it wasn't like that was a deep or ingrained bias, but still, just one experience can kind of set our expectations for the future. Isn't that funny? So I want us to remember this when we're working with those around us, because the people on our teams have experience, and that leads to bias. Maybe somebody was burned by a consultant one time, and so when you introduce a consultant, they're a little bit skittish, right? Or maybe somebody had a bad experience with procurement, where they pushed them to the low-cost solution, but it ended up causing a lot of problems. Does that happen? Yeah, it does. That's part of the reason procurement has a challenge breaking in sometimes. Biases are there, and they come from experience. But where does wisdom come from? It also comes from experience, right? So bias and wisdom are really two sides of the same coin. We don't want to throw that out because it's useful, but we need to use it in the right way. And that's part of the reason that these expensive sentences are so crafty and they sound so true because 70 or 80% of the time, they are true, which is great, except for the other 20 or 30% of the time. And so we have to sort of keep that in mind and realize the context. There's a quote by the British poet, Alfred Tennyson, a lie that is half-truth is the darkest of all lies. And I think that applies here because so many of these things sound so smart and so true, and that's really the seductive power of them to bring you in, but they may not apply here. Now, that kind of shows what we're up against with these expensive sentences, or with these biases, but I want to give you a little bit of hope. And what I want to share with you is that once a bias is identified, it is largely neutralized. In the studies I was talking about earlier, and lots of others like those, when they introduced the subjects that they may have a bias acting and helping them interpret the information, it pretty much wipes out the difference. 